welcome back to another video. So today I have Johanna Basford's World of Flowers coloring book. This is one of my favorite coloring books and I wanted to make this video today because I've been reading through a lot of comments on my YouTube channel as well as posts in my Facebook group and just social media in general. And I see so many posts of a lot of colorists, especially beginners, saying that they are heavy-handed with their coloring and they don't know how to get out of that habit. I also see a lot of posts where people are complaining that they just purchased a colored pencil set and the leads on their pencils keep on breaking. Some even believe that that is the fault of the colored pencils and I really honestly think that the two go hand in hand. A lot of it is because we are heavy-handed and sometimes we're doing it and we don't even realize it. So in this video I'm going to show you how to hold your pencil and we are going to color a leaf today. So you're going to get a new color combination in this video for leaves and I'm also going to go over how to hold your pencil, how to lay down the colors, and why it's so important to try to break the habit of being very very heavy-handed. If you check the description box down below you will find links down there for my email list, my Facebook group if you would like to join us there, my Etsy shop where you could find lots of color charts to swatch your colored pencils, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. So this is the page we're going to be working on today and I did already do a tutorial. This was using neon colors on leaves and I'll link that in the upper right hand corner in case you have not yet seen that video but that was a really really popular video so if you've not seen that go ahead and check that out after you're done watching this one. We are going to go ahead and color another leaf so I decided to do this big one here so I have plenty of room to be able to show you exactly how to hold your pencil, how to lay down the colors, and why it's so important to lay down lighter layers. We are all zoomed in now and I've got some colors here and I'm going to share those with you. And they are a little bit different. I decided to go ahead and grab a light pink because I really wanted to add some pink to my leaf. This is one of my favorite pinks. This is Deco Pink, Sap Green Light, Kelp Green, and Kelly Green. So this one here may end up looking a little bit similar to this one, but I think we're using some different colors. And in this one I used peach. In this case I'm using deco pink. I do have another color that I'm going to bring in because I want to show you a little trick and why it is so beneficial to make sure you're laying down light layers when you're coloring. I will show you what color that is when I get towards the end of the video and I've colored in the entire leaf. So stay tuned for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my lightest color, which is Deco Pink, and I'm just going to lay this color here in the center, but you could see how I'm holding the pencil to do this, and I'm holding my fingers further back, and I'm holding the pencil to the side. I have a nice sharp lead. It's not sharp sharp, but it is enough to be able to use this color as a highlight color because I'm filling a bigger area. So I've got my color all laid down here on the center part of the leaf and I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side and it really helps when you're holding your pencil further back to lay down a lot lighter pressure. You can pull your fingers way back here if you wanted to and that will help you even more to not lay as much pressure down on the paper to be able to color this area in or create your first layer. And then as I come back with the other colors, this one is Sap Green Light. And for the benefit of this video, I am using longer pencils. I grabbed some that were a little bit newer because that also really helps to keep your hands further back on the pencil until you've really learned how to get rid of that habit of being really heavy handed because when your pencil is very, very small, it's very difficult to be able to hold your pencil further back, of course, because if you've got a pencil that is this small and a nub, let me grab one and show you. This is the Deco Pink that we're using. And you can see that this is very, very small. So if I try to hold this really, really far back, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. If this pencil was longer, like this one is, it gives me the ability to hold it as far back as I would like to if I'm just coming in and laying light layers. And this is even more important when you're using oil-based pencils because oil-based pencils definitely need to be laid down light layer after light layer after light layer because they apply in layers one after the other after the other. So I'm going to grab my next color which is Sap Green Light and again I'm going to hold my fingers pretty far back and I'm going to start adding some of this color in here. I'm trying to stay towards the outer edges 
And I am filling in some of the areas where I had originally laid that pink because I really don't want my leaf to look exactly the same on both sides. I tried to make them look a little bit different, but this color will lay right over that pink. Now, if I had come in here and I had put a lot of pressure behind my pencil and I had laid down that pink and put a whole lot of color down there very, very quickly, then I wouldn't have been able to come back as easily and lay this green right over that lighter pink because I would have already used whatever tooth I have in that paper. And that's part of the reason why it's so important to use lighter layers. Now I'm gonna grab my Kelly Green and I'm going to add a little bit of this darker color in here. And again, I do have my hand pretty far back and I'm just blending this color into and over the other colors. And these colors are not just acting as colors, they're also acting as a form of laying down these layers so that I could cover that tooth of the paper. But by not coming in, and using really, really hard pressure, I'm giving myself the ability to be able to be more creative and get more color down on the paper and just come back and keep laying those layers right over one another. And in this one here, I'm trying to do this just a little bit differently because I sort of want this to be a leaf tutorial too where I'm sharing another color combination so you can come back and use that on your own leaves. And if you look at these leaves up here that I did before, I used all of the veins and the lines sort of as a guide, but this one I'm doing a little bit different and I'm trying not to let those lines interfere with what I'm doing. I'm just sort of going right over them for now and adding these colors where I want them and where I think they'll look pretty. And by holding my pencil at the side, rather than coming in and going on the tip of my pencil, I'm also allowing the lead of my pencil to stay fairly sharp so that I don't have to do a whole lot of sharpening. So now I have kelp green and I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this one because this is my darkest color and I wanna be able to get into these smaller spaces to really add some shadows and definition here. In case you're curious about a pencil sharpener because this really affects your pencils and breakage as well, this is the Jarlink. This is my new favorite pencil sharpener. I do still use my doll. I absolutely love that one as well. I do have a review on this and I'll link it in the upper right hand corner, but this is a wonderful pencil sharpener and it is fantastic with my Prisma colors, but look how nice and sharp it made that lead. But I always leave it on three and it is absolutely fabulous. I know many of you have already purchased this pencil sharpener and you love it as well. So I'm gonna come back in now with my kelp green and again, I'm gonna hold my fingers further back. Holding your fingers further back really gives you the ability to not apply all that pressure behind your pencil. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start using those lines just a little bit, just to create a little bit of definition there and I'm still using the side of my pencil. And when I color leaves, I like to use the darkest color where the lines are and also on the outside of the leaf because I feel like that creates a whole lot of depth and dimension. And up in here, I wanna come in and add quite a bit of color. And I am gonna move my fingers down a little bit further now because I wanna be able to get down in that small little area. And you can see now that I have moved my fingers down even further, it gives me the ability to apply more pressure right there. And I know for a fact that right there in that area, I'm not going to need to come back and apply any more layers. So it's okay to go ahead and start applying a little bit more pressure now. So I think I wanna go ahead and come up the center and I want a rather dark center but I'm only gonna go halfway up because I do wanna add another color down here in the center. And that is the color that I'm gonna be coming back with a little bit later. Do you see how just by doing that, it added a whole lot of depth and dimension right there in the center part of the leaf and it just sort of lifted it and make it, made it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And now that I'm moving my fingers down a little bit further, and turning my pencil so that it's not all the way at the side, I'm gonna come in here and start adding the darker color where I want it. I'm getting closer to being done coloring my leaf 
So it's okay now to come in here and start adding the darker color in the places that I want to add that extra depth and dimension. And now I'm gonna start using my lines a little bit more as a guide rather than just coloring right through them like I was earlier. See how I'm using a little bit more pressure behind my hand? And it's really helping to add a whole lot of that color now. On this side, I'm not gonna go all the way up the sides with this darker color. I'm gonna leave some of them a little bit lighter and just add this color where I think it would be pretty. And now I'm gonna start alternating my colors and now that I am a little bit further into coloring my leaf, I'm gonna start moving my fingers down a little bit further on the pencil. And I'm still not all the way at the bottom and I still haven't come in where I want to burnish and get rid of all the tooth of the paper. So remember that because you don't want to come very, very far down until you have your leaf almost completed. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna show you why as I get a little bit further in here. And I'm sort of just blending this color into where I had that darker color. Now remember, I still have two other colors, so I don't wanna cover all of this with green because I want a fairly big area in all of these spaces here where I can still see the pink. And when I laid down that initial pink and just used it as a much lighter layer, I was also re reserving that space so that I know I'm not gonna come back in that space and cover it with another color. So now I have my lightest green and this is my sap green light. And I'm gonna come in here again. I have my fingers a little bit closer now to the tip of the pencil and I'm gonna blend in some of this color and I'm also gonna go over the other colors where I have the green. I'm not gonna go into the areas where I want the pink, but I'm gonna go over the areas where I have the green and I'm going to sort of blend them all out. Still leaving all that space there that now looks more white than pink. And that is because I've got so much green laid down on the paper now. But always use your lighter color of that particular color family. Like here I'm using the pink so that's why I don't wanna blend this green into those areas. I just wanna be able to blend out the colors of this color family. So I'm just gonna go over the areas where I have laid the green and only the green. And I could use a little bit harder pressure now as I come in and I blend some of those colors together. And I still have all that open space where I'm gonna come back and add the pink and wait till I show you this little trick I'm going to do at the end. It's going to change up this leaf so much. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here and again, I moved my fingers down a little bit further. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the lead of my pencil because it's not super, super sharp. It does have a little bit of a dull edge and you could see that it has that space right there on the tip that I was using to color with previously. So I'm gonna put my pencil right back in that position where it was a little bit flatter on the edge. I'm gonna move my fingers down a little bit further and I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to blend this lighter pink in all the areas where I had it and into this green. And I'm gonna start working on finishing this leaf off and bringing all these colors together. And with Prismacolors, they blend together beautifully. So don't be afraid to take your pink and blend it into those greens. It's not going to create a muddy look or anything like that. It's going to blend together beautifully. And I still have space to add quite a few more layers and I have the ability to keep adding more color. I have the ability to come back and add a lot more depth and dimension by using my darker color. I really want to add a little bit of pink here in the center and a little bit of my lighter green as I pull this through just a bit. And I'm gonna start coming back and adding a lot more depth and dimension to this leaf. So of course I need the sharper tip on my pencil, which this is the one that was just sharpened. This is the kelp green. This is my darkest color. I may need to add a color that's even darker than this to add even more depth and dimension to this, but I really want this leaf to pop off the page. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm going to move my fingers even further down and turn my pencil even more so that it's not laying as much on the side and I'm going to try to get a lot more color with heavier pressure down here on this leaf. And you don't have to be afraid that the tips of your pencil are going to break because 
The Prismacolors can take a little bit of pressure as long as your tip is not sharp, sharp, sharp. Of course, any pencil where your tip is super, super sharp, it is going to break. There's really just no avoiding that. So if you want to, when you're coloring your leaf, use the lines of the leaf, the veins and the lines here on going along the outside as a guide. And what I really like to do with my pencils is when I'm coloring leaves, you could probably see that on these up here, but when I'm coloring leaves, I like to go over the veins and by going over the veins and adding more color and darkening them up and bringing that color back to the line art, because what you've done when you've laid all of these colors down here is you have actually covered up a lot of that line art and lightened them up quite a bit. So it always helps to come back and bring that color back to the leaf and that also helps to give it a whole lot of depth and dimension. But when you're doing that, you want to make sure you have a very sharp lead. So I'm gonna sharpen this again. Now I have a super sharp, sharp lead. So I wanna make sure that I am not coming down on my lead just like this. I want to do it a little bit at the side. And I do have my fingers further towards the tip of the pencil because I really want to emphasize those lines and really add that color back in there. But because I used such light pressure when I was coloring this leaf, I still have plenty of the tooth of the paper left to come back and continue applying layers. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you are using light layers and not coming in all at once with your fingers down here on this end of the pencil and just coloring like this. So now that I've done that, I wanna make sure I come back with my next lighter color. In this case, it's Kelly Green. And I'm gonna go over where I made those lines and I'm just going to blend that color out just a little bit and this will give it a much smoother look. See how it just spreads that color out just a bit? You don't wanna ever keep harsh lines when you're coloring. And if you are pulling your fingers way back on the pencil and you're coming in and you're being very heavy handed and really putting that pencil down there, you're gonna end up not only putting way too much color down on the paper at one time, you're also gonna end up with those very harsh lines and they're not gonna blend out when you come back with your lighter colors. I'm gonna come back with my lightest color. This is my sap green light, my lightest of the greens. And I'm again going to blend some of this out so that those lines don't look so harsh and see how it's blending it out even more. And again, I'm trying to stay out of those areas where I have the pink because I want those areas to remain there so I could come back and add even more pink and really emphasize those highlights. Now I'm gonna come back with my deco pink and I'm going to add another layer of deco pink and in this case it's okay now to come down with your fingers a little closer to the lead of the pencil and again lay another layer down here and really blend that color into the greens. Now I do have my fingers down further but I'm still not applying really hard pressure to the paper. I'm still just trying to use more of the tip of the pencil and get some more color down on, onto the paper so that I can really see that pink. And then in a minute here, I'm gonna grab that other color and I am going to make that pink really stand out even more by adding something else to this leaf and making it look very different. Okay, so now is the time I grabbed Process Red and this is why it's so important to lay those light layers down, light layer after light layer after light layer, until you get closer to the end. I still have quite a bit of the paper left, and so this is going to give me the ability to come in and add a pop of process red in all of these areas where I have the pink. So I'm gonna be a little bit daring here, and I'm gonna come in and just add some of this color on this leaf. And I am gonna have to come back and blend it out, but I think it's gonna look really cool when it's done. And this color will go over the green as well. You See how it's just laying right over those other colors? And that's because I went in with a lot of light layers. Cause this paper and these Johanna Bassford books, it's absolutely wonderful, but 
it doesn't have that much tooth so if you're going to come in and start laying down all of those colors with a really heavy hand you're not going to be at, be able to be as creative and add all that extra color that you would like to add. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to sort of spread some of this color out and blend this process red into the other colors. And I'm actually using this color right over the green as well. And I'm just going in a circular motion and I do have my fingers very, very low down towards the tip of the pencil because now I do want to have that pressure behind my pencil. Do you see how by having that pressure behind my pencil, it's spreading all of that color out and just blending it all in? And I want to try a little something over here on the edge of the leaf and make this look a little bit different. And see how I didn't previously add any color there, so I'm able to come right back in and add that color there in the corner, and it looks super, super cool. And I can really go around the leaf and I can do that anywhere that I want to. And it will just add a little bit more color to the leaf and make it look very different. And that's why I say it gives you the ability to be a little extra creative when you're choosing your colors. Because in any other case, I wouldn't have been able to do that had I come in and I laid all that color down really, really quickly and very, very heavily. I wouldn't have been able to come back and add that pop of bright pink and I'm always going to come back over that darker pink and I'm going to use my lighter pink to blend it out but if I wanted to do the same thing over here on some of the other areas of the leaf I'm able to just add that color right in there so I want to add a little bit there and then maybe let's see maybe right here but you can see I'm able to go right over that green and it looks super, super cool. And I still have the ability to lay down more colors if I wanted to. This paper is definitely not done and that's because I used light layers in the beginning for the majority of the coloring of, the, of this leaf as I was laying the colors down. So I went back and added the pop of pink right here in the center vein of the leaf and I can come back and continue to add some of my darker color as well. And it's just really going to create a whole lot of extra depth and dimension to this leaf. And I have the ability to do this just because I lay down lots of very light layers there in the beginning. So another little trick, <laughs> If you want to add even more depth and dimension is to add gray to create more shadows. So I'm using greens here and the color that I want to emphasize are the areas where I have the green and green is a cool color. So when I'm choosing my gray, I want to make sure that I choose a cool gray so that I can emphasize those shadows and use it with my greens. So I have 70% cool gray and I sharpened it to a very nice sharp, sharp lead. And I'm just gonna come back and add a little bit extra depth and dimension in some of the areas where I want it. And then anytime that you do use a gray with your other colors, you always want to come back with the color that you were covering and you want to go over it just one more time because you don't want to see gray. You want to see whatever color that is that you were going over to create more depth and dimension and in this case it is our green. So I'm just going over anywhere where I laid that gray. And then of course I need to come back and just blend a little bit of that out. And in this case, I'm gonna use my lightest green. And I'm using this lightest green as a burnisher. So now that I'm at the end and I've got all my colors laid down onto my leaf and I have them exactly where I want them, I'm gonna use this color and I'm using it in a circular motion and I'm just blending out some of those other colors. You see how it just sort of spreads them all out? Okay, so my leaf is done and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. 
I hope that this video helps you to learn how to create new habits and sort of get rid of the old habits where you put a whole lot of pressure behind your pencils and were very, very heavy handed. Hopefully you can apply some of these techniques to either coloring this leaf using the same colors that I used and practice a little bit or any of your other coloring pages or anything you're currently working on. Anything that you've seen me use in this video, I will have linked down in the description box below so that you could easily find it. I hope that y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.